Welcome to Dr. Charles Speaks, a podcast for now. You've joined us for a special series of transformational talks, selected exclusively from Dr. Charles' corporate success calls. The 15-minute calls are designed to encourage leaders, activate your thought life, and prepare you for the challenges ahead. Dr. Charles joins every call with a blend of his personal experiences, his expertise as a John Maxwell certified mentor and coach, and of course, his more than 30 years of exceptional experience in both corporate America and ministry. Get motivated with Dr. Charles Speaks, a transformational talk from the red line on today's podcast, inspiring excellence and generating results. Good morning and happy Monday. I want to thank you again for joining me on the red line. This is the corporate success call that's only 15 minutes. It is designed, I declare to you, to start your week off on a great and positive note. And it's going to inspire you because it's going to continue to challenge you in your personal leadership growth. And that's what I'm all about, trying to get us to grow up and be the best that we possibly can be. Because we are somebody special and you're somebody special. I want you to make that personal because you are that person. You were born to win, but to be a winner, you must plan to win, prepare to win, and expect to win. That's the key to success. And so today, with the time that we have, I want to talk about the subject area and the subject matter that is, it's not how hard you work, it's how smart you work. You've heard the expression, "You are you working hard or are you working smart? And I want to encourage you today on working smart. You know, when you think about the definition of success, success is the progressive realization of a predetermined goal. This definition of success, it tells us that the discipline to prioritize and the ability to work towards a stated goal, these are the essentials for a leader's success. And so when you are making a success of something, it's not work, it's a way of life. And so it's not working so much harder, but it's working smarter. And 95% of achieving anything really is about knowing what you want. Uh, Robert McCain, he once said this. He said, the reason most major goals are not achieved is that we spend our time doing second things first. And so I want to talk about the importance of doing things in order, doing things that are going to bring you the most and the best results uh, in terms of your growth, in terms of what it is that you're trying to accomplish. And so on today, I'm going to share three points with you that I want to share, and I think that's going to make a difference in you setting priorities, because that is so important. Uh, You could be doing a good thing, but are you doing the right things? So you're going to either fall into the category of being great at organizing or great at agonizing. Which one? You choose today. Are you going to organize or are you going to agonize And so the ability to juggle three or four high-priority projects successfully is a must for every leader. You know, when I recruit and I look for great talent all the time, and uh, uh, one of the things that I'm looking for through their resume and their experience uh, and their uh, work ethic and habits is planning and organizing and structure. You know, a lot of these students, they are in class all day, and then some of them have part-time jobs that they go to, and, and then they also have Uh, community events, whether they're involved in their community or they're involved in their sorority or their fraternity, uh, they're they're multitasking. And so when I think in terms of some of the things that leaders need, one, planning and organization, and then two, being able to multitask, because that is so important. When you're able to plan effectively and organize and be able to do things all simultaneously, I call it a three-ring circus, because if you've ever been to a circus, you're sitting there in the audience, and you see three rings, and you see activity going on in all three rings, and you're watching them, and and uh, it gives you an ideal of what it's like when 
and you are leading and you're getting things done in your job, uh, getting things done at home on various projects. You are multitasking, and that is so important. And so when you think about juggling three or four high-priority projects, there are two things that are most difficult to get people to do, and that is to think and to do things in order of importance. You know, I used to take the approach that uh, on my checklist, I would write down all of the things that I have to do for that given day or for that given week. I would set up my calendar. And sometimes I felt like, you know, boy, I, I got to get started. And I would gravitate to uh, the least hardest thing to do on the list. And uh, I that, that would kind of motivate me to graduate to the things that are really important at the top of the list. But I've changed my mindset on that because I realized that let's put my energy, uh, particularly early in the morning when I have fresh a fresh mind and fresh ideals, I am excited in the morning more so than I am in the afternoon. So when it comes to a list of priorities, then I use the expression of W-I-N. What does that mean? What's important now? And that's the mindset and the attitude that I want you to take going forward. What's important now? So there's a difference between leading and being a follower. And so when you think in terms of leaders, leaders are going to have to be good at the area of planning an organization and multitasking, whereas followers may just be able to do just one or two things and that's it. But you have so much responsibility when you're leading a team or you're leading a department of folks along the way. If you're overloaded with work, I want to give you some things that are going to help you as it relates to organization or agonizing over all of the things that you have to do. When you think about the uh, order of importance of looking at those things and uh, tackling those things that are on your list, there are four things that I want to say. So one, I'm looking at the list of things to do. We have to rank them in terms of high importance and high urgency. And so that means we're going to tackle those projects that are most important for that day, for that week, or for that month, and have the most high urgency. And generally speaking, those are going to be things that perhaps uh, your manager above you has required of you, something that that has to get done, uh, a big project that they've given you because they have all of the confidence in the world that you can get it done and work through your people uh, to get the best results uh, for the entire organization. So that's the number one thing when you look at everything that's on the list. The second thing is uh, you would look at is the high importance but low urgency. So this is where you have deadlines, and you may know in advance that you have something to do. I know in the next 30 days I have a speaking engagement, uh, and the uh, organization has given me the subject matter uh, and the information that they would like to hear from me at such time. And so I know in advance it is high of importance, but the urgency of today is not necessarily it has to be done and completed by the end of the day. And so that would be an example of setting deadlines for completion, even though it's not a hot button that has to be done right now, but you would get to those projects and work them into your daily routine until such time that you have to go on stage and present. And so that's the second one. The third one uh, would be low importance, but high urgency. Now, what do you mean by that? That's find quick, efficient ways to get this work done without much personal involvement. If possible, this is work that you would delegate. So it is low of importance, but high urgency. I'm going to assign that work to someone else in my department, on my team, or I am going to eventually get around to it uh, at another time. 
So one of the things that I, I use in my description when I talk to my people and helping them organize and plan, I, I'll say to them, let's make three lists. One would be these are things that you have to know. And the second would be these are things that you need to know. And then third would be the things that are nice to know. So this is more, this number three, I'm talking about low importance and high urgency would be things that uh, uh, I need to do but they're not high on importance. And so if all possible, then my aim is to delegate it or put it down on the third set of things that I'm going to do. So just in summary, number one, we said high importance, high urgency. We got to tackle those projects first and foremost. Number two, we said high importance, low urgency. We've got to set these deadlines for completion dates and get on top of them and and incorporate what we're doing each and every day to meet the deadline. And then number three, low importance, high urgency. We're going to look for ways to delegate that uh, work out if we can, or we're going to follow up behind number one and two with that. The last one, number four, low importance, low urgency. Now, this is busy or repetition work. These are things that you allow to stack up, and uh, I would suggest that you do these and break down that pile of things that you want to get down uh, to the last page. You begin to uh, peel off a little bit at a time, and you get a chance to do uh, maybe 15 minutes a day. You go to that pile of paperwork, and you begin to break it down until you can get down to the bottom. All right. So organize or agonize. Those are some tips to organize. Those are some tips to put things in priority. And now the next thing I want to talk to you about is that 2080 rule. You've heard of that. The 2080 principle, 20 percent of your priorities uh, will give you 80 percent of your production. So what are we saying? If you spend the time, if you spend the energy, the money, the personnel on the top 20 percent of your priorities, you're going to be successful. That goes back to what I said. You might be doing a good thing, but are you doing the right things? And so when you think about that 2080 rule principle, it refers to other areas as well, uh, such as your top performers. You know, spend time with the people who are the top 20% of producers on your team, and you're going to get some strong results as a result of pouring into them. Number two, you want to spend 80% of your people time with the 20%. That's what I said. And that's exactly uh, is going to be uh, something that is going to be beneficial to you and the entire department. Also, when it comes to uh, the finance part of it, spend 80% of your personal development dollars on the top 20%. So if I've got $8 out of 10, I'm going to put it on the top 20% of what's going to get things done uh, that's going to bring me the most revenue. And then, of course, you need to determine what 20 percent of the work gives 80 percent of the return. And this is where you begin to train some of your assistants to do 80 percent less effective work while you do the 20 percent of the most important work. This is going to free up you to work on what's important and your team is going to assist you in the other 80 percent. And when you put that all together and you make disciples of those folks and you make you duplicate yourself through those folks, then you're going to see a high return. So, folks, I want to thank you today for joining me. I hope this has helped you because success is a progression and the realization of a predetermined goal. And this definition of success is what's going to make all of the difference in your personal growth when it comes to setting priorities. Are you going to organize yourself or you're going to agonize? I'll leave that up to you, but I know that you're going to choose to be better than what you were when it comes to organization. Thank you for joining me on the call. It's been my pleasure to share with you on today. This is a happy Monday. Now let's go back to work. This is the Red Line, the successful corporate conversation that we have every week on Mondays. Have a great week, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to Dr. Charles Speaks. Visit drcharlesred.com for booking info for your ministry, business, or leadership team. Get info about The Red Line, a 15-minute corporate success call each Monday morning with Dr. Charles. Follow Dr. Charles on all social media at Dr. Charles Red.
Subscribe to the podcast here for every episode of Dr. Charles Speaks. Thanks for joining us. Like Dr. Charles always says, no matter what, never, never, never give up. Until next time.